Welcome everyone to this Grapedia portal tutorial. From this login page, you can go ahead and click this Please Register button where you will be asked for your name, email address and password. Please take into account that you must provide an institutional email address. After registration, you should receive an activation email. Once you are registered, you can log in with your account and password. This will then take you to this landing page containing a brief summary of our initiative. On the left, you will be able to find the main navigation menu. You can click on the profile tab for an overview of your personal information and also keep track of analyses that you may have performed in the past. We can then click on datasets to view what is available in Gripedia, which is expected to grow given its federative nature and the rapid growth of grapevine genomics. Each dataset provided is selectable and comes with high quality metadata that complies with the FAIR principles and a user-friendly download button. Next, you will find the Workflows tab, where full workflows will be downloadable for you to run them in your PC. Eventually, you will also be able to run them within the portal once the resources required are put in place. Under the Tools tab, you will find a JBrush tool and a BLAST server. The BLAST service is connected to all the different available datasets, allowing you to find matches for your sequence in any genome or annotation housed by Grapedia using any of the standard search modes of the alignment algorithm such as TBLAST or NBLAST, as you can see here. The Genome Browser will be updated as more grapevine genomes are associated with the portal. You will also be able to select any tracks you want to view, such as annotations, transcriptomic data, etc. The search bar accepts both gene IDs or gene symbols when you are looking for your gene of interest, let's say MIP15 for instance. A drop-down with genes matching our search is provided. We can scroll down to find MIP15. From here, we can then navigate to the different resources available that are linked to our gene, such as JBrowse, BLAST services, and external databases such as Uniprot. We can click, for example, on the JBrowse button to view our gene of interest within its chromosomal location. Finally, we can look at the following dashboards, which reactively display information based on user input. The front-end components have been built using React to actively retrieve information from the back-end on the go. We will carry on with MIP15 as an example. The search bar provides options based on our query after which we must select our gene. Both gene symbols and or gene IDs can be used within gene cards. On the left-hand side, we can look at the gene catalog information as well as some useful links that directly search for our gene in external databases such as Grameen, which takes us directly to the gene tree of MIP15. On the right-hand side, an interactive box plot showing gene expression values of our gene of interest across different tissues and experiments is generated. Currently, this expression data comes from the VitVis platform. At the bottom, we can find if any DAPSEC data is available. Here we can see all the transcription factors that have been shown to bind in the promoter region of the search gene. In our case, no TF appears to bind upstream of MIP15 based on the current data. Further down, we can take a look at the most co-expressed genes with MIP15 in networks built using different datasets, some of which are tissue specific. Changing the dataset here allows us to see how MIP15 is co-expressed with still bean synthases in both leaf and tissue-independent networks. For now, 
All of this data stems from whole genome aggregated network efforts described in VidBiz. We can now search for STS31. The same type of information is now displayed for the new gene. We can now go to Gramin and look at how this gene is conserved across species. When scrolling down beyond the box plot, we can see that in this case we have DAPSEC data. In fact, we have three binding events reported, one for MIP14 and two for MIP15. Finally, we can find a lot of still being synthases co-expressed with STS31, suggesting some kind of group level regulation. If we want to examine a set of genes instead, we can go to the multiple genes dashboard, which can generate a heat map of gene expression across the same data used for network generation. For doing so, users can use the search bar to find and select any number of genes. In this case, we can try with MIP14, MIP15 and some STSs. The interactive nature of the heat map allows to examine which SRA run a particular value corresponds to. The same datasets provided for the networks can also be selected here. Below the heat map, a conversion table is provided. Below the heat map, a conversion table is provided, which shows different ID equivalences. In addition to the interactive search bar, we also allow the option of uploading an Excel file with a list of gene symbols or IDs in the first column to serve as a query. By simply dragging our file, we can see how the search bar is filled in. Clicking on the search button will have the same effect as if we had added each gene one by one. You can see here the same type of heat maps and conversions, which can be, by the way, downloaded as a table. We can then see how easily we can add or remove datasets to our x-axis by using the tick boxes provided. The last dashboard to share with you allows us to visualize network data through nodes and edges using a Cytoscape plugin. Again, the input is a set of genes, as we can see in our example. Here we can examine co-expression between MIP14, MIP15 and different STSs across different tissues, based on the network datasets described earlier. Nodes can be moved in an interactive manner to facilitate visualization. Within this dashboard, we additionally display data from the one gene network provided by Stefania Pilati. This showcases the nature of the portal, where a range of databases can feed different information to Grapedia, which can then be easily visualized and compared. To further demonstrate how this dashboard can help extract meaning from co-expression data, we can use the guilt by association principle to see whether our genes of interest are preferentially associated to a particular biochemical pathway. We therefore choose representative enzyme coding genes of different phenylpropanoid pathway branches.
We can see here that our TFs of interest associate mainly with the stilbenoid branch rather than the anthocyanin producing enzymes. The hub-like organization info contained within the network is hence displayed, allowing to not only explore secondary metabolism, but other biological processes of your interest that may co-express differently. This is everything we wanted to share with you so far. Thank you very much for your attention. And please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any future updates.